At low tide, many animals get stuck in the pools that are formed in the rocks. These tidal pools are rich ecosystems where animals have good hiding places to wait for the ocean water to come back. But this also creates a perfect trap, and different predators take advantage of it. Today, I'm joining them. I'm gonna try to capture the best images of these colorful habitats. And what is more important for me, I want to find the most intelligent mollusk on our planet, the octopus. If you had watched any of my other videos, you probably realized mollusks are often present, because yes, I adore them. They are the second largest phylum of invertebrates, and the diversity within this group is impressive. But there's something I need to fix before going to the beach. My camera is this phone, and it's not waterproof, so I'm going to try something that maybe will work. I think this will be perfect. Let's go to the beach. So let's dive our camera into the pools. Starting from the high zone, the area that spends the most time out of the water. Here, the anemones are closed, waiting for the water to come back. The vegetation offers a perfect shelter for the small snails. And sometimes, you can also find fish trapped in the biggest pools. Here, in the high zone, the crabs are the bosses. Their ability to leave the water and move from pool to pool is a great advantage over the other animals in this ecosystem. As we move towards the sea, we begin to find organisms more vulnerable to desiccation. The colorful archons decorate the walls, protected with their sharp spikes. Not far from them, another echinoderm lies unnoticed. The sea cucumber is not the most stunning animal, but it has an important role. They break down the organic matter. By turning over rocks, we expose the animals hiding beneath them, mainly brittle stars, the athletic cousins of the starfish. In this zone, there's also a great population of hermit crabs. As you know, they use the shells from other animals to protect their soft body. With every food we move, the mussels and snails are less abundant. Many of the predators inhabit this zone. The whelks are able to find them even buried in the sand, and they can easily bore through their shells. But other predators stalk the whelks. The sea stars don't look fearsome but they are top predators in this ecosystem. They aren't fast, but the speed is not that important. At least, that's what we can assume when we find a Cecil anemone eating a crab. We are already quite close to the ocean, in the low zone. Here, the anemones are still open, waving their tentacles, offering a colorful show that makes me feel as if I was in a coral reef, although I'm still in Europe. I also found this worm, related to the earthworms we see on land. This is my first video documenting the wildlife in their habitat, so any feedback will be appreciated to know if I should do more videos like this. Also, there are no more pools to check, so I'm about to call it a day. But I saw a tentacle peeking out of a crack, and I needed to investigate it. I quickly dipped my camera in, only to find this eye staring back at me. The apex predator of this ecosystem. The octopus. He wasn't happy about my presence, and squirted a jet of water at my phone. He felt stalked and left the crack to run away from me, changing color to mimic the light sun underneath him. I wouldn't like to bother him, and I reckon I already did a great job conveying the beauty of this ecosystem, from the colorful landscape to the intricate relationships between the animals inside. So we are finishing this video here, I hope you find it half as interesting as I did, and thanks for watching.